What's up fish friends? Welcome back to Casual Reef Keeping. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content on reef tanks. Today we're going to talk about the ACI calc washer method. Now that I've been using it for... Wow, we must be coming up on eight months? We've been using it for quite some time now after I switched to calc washer. I had seen a couple live streams featuring Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture and he has this method of dosing calc washer that is kind of frowned upon these days in I guess the pop culture of reef keeping. Everybody's gotten into don't chase numbers, don't chase pH, stable alkalinity, and I was doing the same thing. I had a calcium reactor running, relatively stable alkalinity, pH was uh, in the toilet because of course a calcium reactor is a carbonic acid generator. And carbonic acid, acid has a low pH, resulting in the tank having a lower pH. So then I started dosing calc wasser, again to maintain alkalinity, and it helped my pH come up, but it was like, it was, I was playing games between the calc wasser and the calcium reactor, and I was just constantly tweaking things. So when I heard about the method that Chris Meckley uses at ACI, I decided I want to give it a shot. And the basis, in simple terms for this method, is you are dosing calc wasser to pH which seems a little contradictory with everything nowadays of don't chase pH. But honestly, I'm very satisfied. It, it was a little scary at first because you get this alk spike at the beginning, but it worked great. I, I'm still using it and I do not see myself stopping anytime in the near future. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown of how I got it started. So first I set up my dosing pump for my calc washer. After I determined, out as a cat. Come here, cat. Salem, say hi. If you're gonna disrupt the video, you have to say hi. Or just lick my face. Okay, all right, go away. <laughs> for the calc washer dosing rate using this method, after I determined my evaporation rate, I had to convert that to milliliters per minute and double it. This was so that in the 12 hours, give or take, that my pump should be dosing, that will be my entire evaporation and that is my maximum limit of calc I can dose. Because you obviously can't dose more than your evaporation or you'll cause your salinity to change, you'll cause your sump rate to, uh, your sump level to raise. So that's where you've got to set your maximum. That's kind of like your safety net but your other safety net is going to be calibrations you need to make sure you check the calibration on whatever dosing pump you're using and your ph pro because this method is only as good as your testing tools if you allow your ph probe to drift and it's reading low and now you're sending your ph high i mean people do run much higher than 8384 i've heard of guys hitting 87 88 89 but you want to work with consistency here. So calibrate your equipment and you won't have any issues. So with my dosing pump set, now I'm going to program my dosing pump to turn on at just above my average pH. I did this so that I could wiggle my way up to 8.3. So I started at 8.2, pH was below 8.2, dosing pump came on and kept it up and then every couple of days I just bumped it up to 2, to 4, to 6 and then I just ran out of patience and went right for the 2.9. I had a little bit of an alkalinity spike, very brief. I don't think it might have hit almost 13 but I was running near 11 anyway so it wasn't the end of the world. Honestly, no ill effect. Like I just let it ride and we were in good shape. So now the tank um, is set to turn on at three, uh, sorry, not three, 8.29 and below. So when my pH drops to 8.29, the dosing pump kicks on and continues to buffer it. And it cycles on and off a little bit because the calc washer really does work pretty well until uh, 
my photo period brings the pH up. I hit about 8.38 usually, just naturally through the photosynthesis. And then when it comes back down, my pump kicks back on. I also set up my ATO, which I'm using the uh, Neptune ATK attached to my Apex. Set that up so that if my alkalinity dosing is on, my ATO will not come on. So if for some strange reason it hadn't gotten to cycle on yet, and now I'm dumping calc in, I don't want to start dumping fresh water in at the same time. I could end up coming up too high or overcompensating. I just figured I don't want these two doing the same thing at the same time. So I have that turned off. After a couple months running on this method, I actually had to turn my calcium reactor back on. At six liters a day, maxed out to my summer evaporation, I can't put any more calc wasser in, unless I switch to something like a slurry, because I'm, I'm at saturated calc at this point. I'm not sure if slurry is something I want to mess with right now. I've seen guys with good success on it, and that the risks aren't as crazy as they've made it out to seem. I just don't know if that's something I want to put the time and effort into. Because when you're putting all that time into your slurry percentage, you've got to maintain the mix. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to be as consistent every batch. So this was the simplest method for me because I already had the calcium reactor. I cleaned it out, got it restarted at a very low rate. And now as my alkalinity demand increases, I just turn the calcium reactor off. There is a correlation, and I'm not a chemist, but I know that calc wasser corresponds, not corresponds, reacts with the dissolved CO2 in your water, and that's how you get your bicarbonate. So I haven't seen any ill effects of turning the calcium reactor back on. My photo period peak pH isn't as high. I think it's swung up to as high as 844 before putting the calcium reactor on. But with the calcium reactor on, I'm still maintaining my average pH at 8.3. And the corals look great. I mean, you can see the purple stylo right over my shoulder is, it's over a foot across now. I'll have to show you guys some older pictures of it too, or just check back at some older videos. You'll see over my shoulder that it wasn't that big. Um, I've got all these Monte Pore growing like crazy over my left shoulder. You've got the purple, the red cap, Hollywood stunner. On my other side, there's some green cap. Wish my acros would grow like that. I'd, I'd much rather have some sticks growing, but the Montipora are growing like weeds. It, it's, it's been insane growth. So I just wanted to go through my process and uh, where we are. I, I'm, I'm just leaving it alone at this point. The only thing I changed from Chris Meckley's method is that I used a calc stirrer instead of a reservoir. I did this mostly just for space constraints. This was easier for me to just run it through the stirrer. And he uh, he isn't a huge fan of it. And I, and I can see the potential where, especially at higher volumes of water, if the stirrer doesn't stir enough, you may not be dosing saturated calc, which I knew going into it. I have not experienced that issue myself. That doesn't mean it's not possible. But luckily, the stirrer is working for me. I had a brief bit at the beginning where I thought the stirrer wasn't working. I was like, dang it, Chris was right. Why did I doubt him and switch to a reservoir, which was easy enough for me. Um, you can probably check back in my last video. I mentioned it. There is a uh, ATO storage tank in my basement, and that's what's feeding my Versa that feeds then into the calc stirrer. So all I did was move the Versa's output right to the tank and it's in tank to a 32 gallon garbage can in the basement that I slapped together real quick just to try it. And that didn't improve my dosing issue either. It turned out for whatever reason, the date and time on the, on the uh, Ecotech Versa I was using got all screwy. So it thought it was hitting a maximum daily dose like in the middle of the day because it thought midnight was coming sooner. I don't know, programming issue, probably operator error. I'm not sure, but easy enough to troubleshoot and work through. So I'm back on the stir and it's been running great. I really have no complaints. So check out some of the corals and hopefully you decide to try this method too. I, I can't believe my complaint of with this method is I have too much coral growth. I have Hollywood stunner that I would love to get rid of. Um, 
Montipora that's actually shading its lower levels and starting to die, and I guess I gotta rummage through my tank a little bit now. Before we get on to the corals, I just want to give you guys a quick view of what it does look like under the sump here. So this is the stir, and that white line is coming up from the ATO reservoir in the basement into that Neptune Versa. Yes, it's a Versa, the dosing pump. And then out the blue line and into the stir, and the stir works just by overflowing, basically. And then here's my calcium reactor as well. This thing is barely on it. You can't even see the flow through it. It is simply handling the uh, last bit of the alkalinity. But the stir is doing the bulk of the work. I open up the lid, top it off a little bit, and then otherwise I clean it out every couple weeks. And Salem wants to be popular now. This is a frag of purple stylo. You can see how nice and fluffy and happy these uh, polyps are. I could probably trim that stylo all day, every day. I think this piece is a, uh, a millipora. You can kind of see the polyps drifting in there as well, as well as the Walt Disney Tenius. And just, the acro is just tabling. This is awesome. I am just so happy, but like somewhat frustrated with what I need to do now to clean this out because you can see that lower level is starting to kind of die as it's gotten shaded. There's some like shelves that have fallen and broken. So my hand for sort of scale. <laughs> the growth is nuts. The purple stylo doesn't even look like I lopped a couple frags off. I gave some away to some uh, new reefers looking to get into SPS. This is a uh, three-quarter inch frag plug for scale. It's in the back of the tank, so you kind of, you lose the scale, but it, it's like 14 inches across for sure. I'm just loving Calc Blosser right now. This is, this is fantastic. I could not be happier. Anyway, thank you guys for checking out this update on my usage of the ACI method. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Every uh, bit of social interaction helps the channel. We do this for the fun of it. I love this hobby. I love helping people in the hobby. Um, I don't get anything out of this. I don't have sponsors. That's, that's not my thing. I am adding now the buy me a cup of coffee link in the description if you'd like to support the channel that way. Otherwise, give me a like, a subscribe, and even a share. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.